In this video, I'm gonna show you how to develop your brand's imagery. Imagery can communicate a brand's lifestyle, use, purpose, and vision very quickly and efficiently if correctly focused around the brand. In this video, I'm going to develop imagery for the Votech brand that we've been building throughout this series. Because the Votech brand isn't real, I'm going to be using 3D renders as my method of creating imagery. The principles of 3D rendering and photography are very close to each other, so in this video, instead of focusing on the medium, we're going to focus on the principles that would create the imagery. For the Votech brand, we need to develop three different types of imagery. Product showcase, product still life, and lifestyle. For our product showcase, we're gonna be developing imagery of the product only. So this is gonna be used for our website, our packaging, anything that we need to show just the product, not in context of anything else. That leads us to still life imagery. And in still life imagery, we wanna show the product in context of the brand. So we wanna show our product in a room that looks like what the brand should be living in, in a space with other objects that also represent the brand in some sort of way. And that leads us to still life imagery. So in still life imagery, we wanna show the product in the context of the brand, in a room that looks like what the brand should look like with other objects associated with the brand. We wanna create the overall feeling of the brand and present the product inside of it. And lastly, lifestyle imagery is pretty straightforward. We wanna show the product in use, people enjoying it, we wanna show its utility and its uses, and we wanna show it showcased within the lifestyle that we're trying to sell. In this video, I'm gonna be using Adobe Dimension and Cinema 4D to create these renders. I'm gonna run into some capability issues with recording my screen and talking about it, so I'll be developing the imagery and stopping here and there to show you my thought process and hopefully give you some ideas when developing imagery for your brand. All right, I'm inside of Adobe Dimension where I have a 3D model of the helmet that I'll be working with. This is the fictional Raven H11 helmet that Votech produces and is the main product. Now I purchased this model online, but for the purposes of this video, I've retextured it entirely inside of Dimension, giving it a nice plastic finish um, on the plastic parts. I've put a little bit of a smudgy texture on the glass pieces for the inside visor and the outside visor. And you can see that we created this mesh filter that actually came with the model, but I adjusted it a bit to be more extreme um, than the original. One other addition, if you remember a few videos back, we created the 3D version of our logo. This is how it can be used. So we've plugged this into the back of the helmet here. So we've got a nice shiny metal Votech logo um, that'll come out nicely in our renders. Adobe Dimension is incredibly easy to use. It creates photorealistic renders very, very quickly. It has a lot of textures that are preloaded that you can customize quite a bit. And it also still allows you to pull in things like normal maps and other ways to make your materials look more realistic. It has an incredible library of pre-built textures that you can drop onto your model and customize quite a bit, while also giving you the freedom and flexibility to upload your own normal maps, bump maps, anything you need to create a texture that is what you're looking for. Now for the first set of images, we need to create the product showcase. So we wanna show this helmet just in an empty void environment um, and just show the different angles of it. So for this, I'll be getting a straight on view, a side view, a rear view, and then some different angled views that we can pull for different projects in the future. To do that, the first thing I'm gonna do is just increase the size of this render. I'm gonna go about 3000 by 3000 pixels just to make sure that thing's nice and big in case we wanna put it on packaging or anything else that we're gonna be working with. Also my camera, I'm gonna to wanna to have a little bit less of a field of view. With a greater field of view, we're gonna get warped. With an increased field of view, anything towards the center of the camera is gonna have this warped effect right here and look much bigger. So we're gonna to wanna to keep that field of view very narrow so that we have a realistic view of what this helmet looks like. And people will have a pretty good idea of when they buy it, what they're gonna get. And this is really what we want to be focusing on with just the product renders. We want to show people exactly what they're getting, what the product looks like, show off the details of the product. We're not getting too fancy or stylized here. And that's really what we're trying to do with the product showcase. We want to show people right off the bat what they're getting, what they should expect. We want to showcase all the different elements of the product so they can see all the details. We don't want to get too fancy or stylized here. Now another important factor when doing this product photography is we need to figure out what type of lighting we're going to use. Right here we have a selection of different lights that we can use. Um, directional lights are going to be actual physical lights that sit within the scene and cast light. We also have our environment light, so this is going to work like kind of a wrap. It, um, these are really nice because they'll give us some good reflections that will that will definitely show in the glass and in the top of the helmet right here. What I'm looking for here is I think I want a three point studio light. So we'll go ahead and we'll hit this. And then I also want the three point light setting here. 
and that should create a cool effect where we've got some background glow, but then also fill in all the different details of the helmet. Now chances are in these renders, we're gonna be showing a dark background. So I just wanna test what this lighting looks like. Now I'm pretty happy with that lighting, but I do want to adjust it just a little bit. I'm going to turn down our environment light so it's not as bright, I'm not filling in the helmet as much. I want to intensify my backlight and bring down my fill light so that we get some harsher lighting effects. So I want really bright lights showing at different angles um, to give this a really intense look. So now after running that render, I can tell that my environment light is a little bit low. I definitely want to fill in some of the gaps there. So I'm going to brighten this up so we can see all of the details. Another tip you can see right at the top right here, I'm hitting this render preview. That's going to give me an idea of what this render will look like when it's actually rendered out. It's not going to be as high quality as the final render, but it'll give me a good idea if my lights are in the right place, um, if my materials look correct and we can adjust that before sending it out to the final render. So very useful tool. And with that, looking at the preview, I am pretty happy with the lighting setup here. We can turn this around, look at it on the side just to make sure that it's also working here. I'm pretty happy with this, so I'm gonna go ahead and prep all of our product showcase renders. All right, so I've gotten to the end of this and I've created 30 files to showcase the Votech helmet product. Now you can see here I've divided this because it's a modular helmet, so different pieces come off of it. I divide it into full face shots, half face shots, and no face shots where all of the mods um, have been removed and your face is showing. Um, I've then divided that into each angle of that face section um, and laid them out here. Now in these detail shots, you can see here, I focused in on one aspect of the helmet that I want to render a close up of um, so that I have those in the future to reference for photography for specific aspects. In that, I have included the release function on the helmet. I did a close up of that, a close up of the logo on the back. I did a close up of some of the vents the inside lining on the helmet I got a close up of, um, just so in the future we can showcase the different aspects of it in our advertising, social media, um, whatever else we need to have those imagery pieces pulled out for. Now that we've completed the product showcase, the next thing we're gonna do is do still life. So in a still life, I'm gonna approach this from two angles since I'm rendering it. I'm gonna create entirely 3D scenes where everything in the scene is a 3D object, and I'm going to find photography where I can easily put the helmet into it render it into the scene and then go into Photoshop later and clean up the comp. So I'll work on those files and then when I'm done, we'll review them. All right, so it's been several days since I started developing the still images for the Votech helmet. What I'm gonna do now is walk you through each of those images, how I made them, what I had in mind when I was putting them together and what I was taking into consideration for future designs while I was designing them. So the first images I wanna walk you through here are going to be entirely developed inside of a 3D space. So. Every single element was pulled into 3D. Um, they're all interacting with each other inside of one space. And there's a few benefits to creating images in this fashion. One benefit is that when I develop everything inside of 3D space, I have to do very little composition work. What composition work is, is after Photoshopping something together or rendering it, you then have to blend it with its outside elements. This includes adding its reflection on other elements, adding its shadow on other elements, uh, getting the lighting to match um, from one source to the next, the way that a photo is edited, might give it a, uh, a different colored shadow or a different colored highlight. These are all things that we have to take into consideration when we're comping things together. We don't really have to take this into consideration when everything's inside of the same scene that's been rendered out. Everything will already be casting light. Everything will already be casting shadows. All the things we'd have to figure out when comping has already been done here because it's all inside the same space. The one downside to renders that I would say is that you usually get lower quality assets. So one thing I wasn't super happy about here is if we look at some of these textures, they're not super detailed. And because all the assets came from different places, each asset also has varying level of detail. You can see the side of this box here. Um, I really should add some scuff marks, something on this to make it look a little bit more realistic. Same thing with the tire here, same thing with the body of the bike. But even if there is some trouble I'm having with some of these assets, this is overall going to help me in a different space, which is why I created it. The nice thing about having a render like this is I can do a couple things to make my job easier in the future. For one, this background can be removed um, very easily. I can just with a click of a button remove this blue background and put this on top of anything. Whereas in a photo image, I'm gonna have to do a cutout and it might take some work to get it to look right. This one, I can just hit that button and overlay this right on top of other elements and it'll look just perfect. What I tried to do here was kind of create this man cave vibe um, that fell in line with our brand. So you can see some of the elements that are helping that. We've got a whiskey over on the table. We've got a hardwood table, this motorcycle and workbench over here, a shelf full of some knickknacks, uh, wine up top, 
and with all the elements I tried to pull in things that had similar textures to what we saw inside of the stylescape. So now I'm going to scroll through some of the other images so you can see some other shots that I got out of this scene. The next up is a close up of the helmet and what I like about this shot is that some of these background elements that I wasn't super happy with the textures on are now blurred and they look really good when they're blurred. So this is a good shot, I'm pretty comfortable with it, I'll probably be using this in a lot of the materials we build. Next up I got a side shot of the helmet, again really happy with this one. We've got one with the helmet up on the motorcycle. When I was developing this I could see this being a social media ad, we can crop this as a square, put some text behind the helmet, I think that'll look pretty good. Next up we got the helmet on the floor next to the motorcycle's tire. Then we've got the helmet right up on the couch here. And lastly, my favorite one, we've got the whiskey right in front of the helmet with the Votech logo and kind of this metal marble um, knickknack. And you can still see the bike in the background, some of the knickknacks up on the shelving unit and the couch in the background. So I really like this one. I feel like it says a lot about the brand very quickly. So that now brings us into the photo renders. So what I did here was I rendered the helmet into a photographic scene. I got all these images off of Unsplash, which is a free online stock site. You can find some great high quality images here. It works really well for this project because none of these assets are going to go into production. None of them are going to be sold. Uh, they're purely just for showcasing things and it's a great site for doing that. The site really works well in this circumstance because none of these assets are going to go into production or be sold or distributed widely. So I don't need to worry about the licensing on them. But it helps us visualize what these photos would look like if we had a massive photo budget and could go out, get these photos ourselves. So in this picture, this is one of my favorites that I can see us using for a lot, probably specifically print ads, because we have the road that goes off into the distance towards this mountain. It looks really cool, with the helmet laying right in the middle of the road with some dramatic lighting on it. Now I can see this working perfectly with the tagline, ride of a lifetime for a lifetime, just top and bottom of it. Really happy with this one. Now this image isn't necessarily some sort of spectacular fancy photography. It is well composited. There's a lot of things. I like the symmetry of it. The colors are very nice. The main reason I chose this and what I was thinking of was the messaging. This is something to take into consideration when you're pulling your imagery or figuring out what you want it to look like. Think about your messaging. What images could work with your messaging to create an impactful ad? Next up here, we have this tabletop view of a map. Looks like someone's getting ready for a trip. So I just included the helmet in the gear that they're getting ready for this trip. What I like about this image right here is that we're using the helmet and we're presenting it as a tool to help with this trip. So you can see all the different prepping materials. Uh, we can see the map, we can see the coffee, the wine, the instructions on how to get somewhere. And then we included the helmet as part of his journey, all the tools that he's going to need to go on this trip. So by combining those things together, we're really telling a story about the helmet's purpose. That's the reason I like this photo. Next up here is very similar to the first photo we looked at. I'm not gonna go into describing this too much, but it's a second photo, just in case we need some variation. If something didn't work about the first photo when we got, actually got into production, this photo would be a nice backup. Now this photo goes into a different direction. This leans more heavily into the lifestyle part of the brand. You can see some elements of the stylescape right here, the texture of the couch, the wood, the wall back here, the painting, the imagery. It all feeds into the brand's overall look and its lifestyle. So this isn't so much about the actual use of the product, uh, but it feeds into the aura that we're trying to create. This image right here was trying to do the same thing, but I'm gonna be honest, I do not like it. It does not work. I could not get the lighting to match. I could not get the shadows to match. It just doesn't feel that strong. I don't really get it. And this happens sometimes. Sometimes we put a lot of effort and a lot of work into an image and it's just not working and we have to accept that and move on. This is an example of that. Something that's not working that I'm going to have to part from and throw away. This image went into a different direction. So this is kind of another side of the travel going to a spectacular place. We have all the lights at night. It doesn't feed into the brand as much as the other images, but I liked it because it gave us some variation. If we wanted to show the helmet in a different scenario, kind of vary the imagery that we've been looking at, maybe uh, as a splash into the Instagram page, something like that. This is a nice image to just be different than the others. And this image right here, we're actually starting to pull on some bikes. So you can see that I chose a bike right here that had also very similar textures to what we saw in the stylescape. We've got that leather texture right here, that nice finish on the white part of the bike right here. And we've got the sunset with the road. I thought it was a really gorgeous image and the helmet really slotted into that beautifully. Now this image is also really doing the same thing. We're showing the helmet in use along with another piece of the road trip. And lastly, this is by far my favorite image that I was able to produce during this session. It focuses on the helmet, makes it nice and big in the scene, but it doesn't look entirely focused on the helmet. We can still see the blurred background here, the Harley Davidson. Um, that's sitting on top of right here. So it's kind of marrying another brand to it. I'm very happy with this image. The lighting effects are probably the biggest thing that draw me in. We've got these shadows are 
very orangey yellow red um, even the highlights kind of have an orange hint to them it really blends together beautifully and it's my favorite image out of these we'll probably be seeing a lot of this in the future materials that we develop I really like it. So if you're wondering how I developed this imagery, I used a program called Dimension, which is Adobe's new 3D program. To use this program, I just imported the 3D Hummet model that I bought online. I imported it, then I textured it using the textures available inside of the program. From there, I imported the image that I was going to overlay the helmet on top of, got it into position, made sure the lighting was right, and then went to render it. When I go to render the image out of Dimension, I actually render it out as a Photoshop file. And when it renders it out as a Photoshop file, it splits each individual element in the scene into its own layer. So that makes it really easy for comping. When I bring it into Photoshop, I can then select all of those layers, add shadows, add different lighting effects to really make it all come together. And when I'm done, I can export that as a JPEG or a PNG if I want a transparent background and call that good. So now that we've finished looking at the product showcase and the still life imagery, the next imagery we're gonna look at is the lifestyle imagery. So the main difference that we're going to see inside of lifestyle photography is that there's going to be actual people interacting with the product. So in this case, we have the helmet sitting on top of this guy's head as he's sitting on his motorcycle on this bridge. I'm very happy with this photo. I love the tones in it. I love the setting of it. And the helmet just slots in here perfectly. The nice part about pulling a person into the image is that our viewers can now empathize with somebody. They can now put themselves in their shoes. They can imagine themselves as the person with the helmet on inside of this scene using it. It shows the utility of the helmet. It shows the lifestyle around the helmet. And this photo right here kind of showcases um, what that looks like when we execute it. In this photo, we are in a parking garage and it has interesting lighting above it that we can see reflected on the helmet. I also really love the hair kind of spilling out of this one. It makes the picture uh, interesting, makes it different than the other ones that we've seen. I really like this. I also like the vertical look of this. We can bring this into a print ad or something, maybe put some text back here. A pretty good composition. Hats off to whoever took this photo. So in this photo, this is a bit different than the last two we've looked at because this focuses mostly on the style and the helmet as a fashion piece. So we can see this guy, he's chosen his outfit and put the helmet on on top of it. Um, all the pieces of his outfit kind of work together and it shows off the entire lifestyle of the helmet instead of just the helmet on its own. Another thing I really like here is just the contrast. We've got a lot of color and noise going on in the background paired with his very simple and neutral outfit here. Uh, and it really draws attention to him when the outside is so much different. This is another image I like, but for different reasons than the others. Because it's so different than the other pictures that we've looked at, it'll provide a nice contrast, and it focuses more on the environment than the helmet. The helmet is something that really just kind of slots into it. I like it, it's subtle. Now this is another image that focuses more on the helmet as an actual style piece. So we can see that the helmet kind of works as a fashion statement along with the rest of the things that he's wearing here. Uh, this works really well as kind of like a model picture to show what the helmet looks like on somebody. Uh, I like it. There's really not much else to say here. This is another image I really like. His outfit aligns with the brand that we're trying to create. The environment, it's got a lot of nature. Looks like he's on a road trip. The compositing worked out really well. Very happy with this one. This is a similar image to the last one, except now we have this extra element of all the smoke kind of blowing around the helmet. I'm assuming from a burnout or something. It's a cool added element uh, that really wraps the helmet into the scene. Um, something I'm pretty happy with. Now we're getting into the last two images, which have a lot in common. In these images, we don't see the front of the helmet, so it's not as identifiable, but it's part of this scene right here. We're really trying to build this cinematic scene of this guy watching the sunset with the mountains in the background. He's enjoying his ride, and the helmet's really just part of that. It slots right in. And if we zoom in real close, we can see the Votech logo kind of shining very small here. But the helmet isn't its own piece right here. We're focusing on the whole scene, the entire environment around the helmet. And this image really works even though it doesn't show the helmet up front and center. It shows it inside of the environment that we're trying to sell, the lifestyle that we're trying to sell. So I really like this image. It builds a scene, it builds a mood, and the helmet is just one of the elements that helps that come to life. And lastly here we have this image which I'm a big fan of. What I really like about this one is we have all this space for us to put in text or messaging. We've got a lot of white space to work with. This would be perfect for any type of banner for a website, a banner ad. I also like this because it showcases the road trip vibe that we're going for. We're showing the helmet is just kind of a, a tool to aid you on your road trips. We can see that because we can see the motorcycle parked on the side of the road. And we can see our figure here holding one of our helmets, which again I like because this is just a silhouette. So we're kind of showcasing the iconic silhouette of this 3D model. We have the extruding jawline, which is special to this helmet, and the half visor. It's got an interesting look to it. 
Um, and it all comes together in this beautiful scene. And with that, we have looked at our product showcase, our still life, and our lifestyle imagery. Once again, each of these different executions are gonna help us out in different ways when we're going to production in the future, and they should help lay the foundation for all the projects we're going to do later. Now, during this video, I didn't have the physical product with me or the resources, the time, the logistics to go out and plan these shoots myself, but I hope that it helped you think about the different ways that you can create your imagery and strategically come up with it to help benefit your future projects. If you like this video, it's actually part of a series where I'm taking this Votech brand from start to finish, taking you along that process, giving you free resources so that you can develop your own brand and giving you some tips that I use to create brands like this. Please subscribe if you'd like to see more of these videos. I'll be posting more over the coming weeks. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one.